the judge has just said you're not allowed to cross-examine these witnesses, and a lawyer will do that on your behalf. The code also makes the provision for a person to be able to conduct the cross-examination who's appearing on their own behalf, providing trial judge deems it in the interest judge of... judge could do that, but the judge in this case has said, no, you're not doing that. You're not but it hasn't been a trial judge yet. We've been having one judge after another. Does that make a difference if I were to present in, in the case? In provincial for... court, I suppose you could revisit the issue with the trial judge. You always could. Maybe circumstances change. But in provincial court, one provincial court judge at any point in the case has the same authority as any other one. And so... Uh, a, a judge who is necessarily the, the actual judge sitting in the trial, but is still a provincial court judge, can make an order about the trial, and that trial judge is likely to follow that order. They, they don't have to. They could change their mind. It could be something that changes. When does someone in my circumstances get the opportunity to compel a judge as to the value You wouldn't be able to compel of... the judge, but you could ask the judge okay. to make a different order, if you wish. Okay. And... And it looks like they're not ready to do that in this case. I would say usually they would never do that. I, you shouldn't expect that to happen, but you can certainly revisit it, but it'll be up to the trial judge to decide. Um, separate from that, you could, I suppose, appeal the order that was made in provincial court in Supreme Court. That's what the judge was saying, that he, there's the, the jurisdiction is beyond his. If I were to do that, I would have to seek the jurisdiction. You'd have to, go to, of, you'd ask, um, you'd have to ask for... Uh, judge Milne was saying that a couple yeah, weeks ago. That, yeah. And that's correct. You'd have okay. to go to Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court judge could overrule the provincial court judge on that issue. What about taking the case entirely? It's sort of freedom of speech versus religious privilege slash abuse of religious privilege. Any interest in you in sort of handling it? Because well, we're going to trial, you know? Yeah, so you've, you've, you've got... So the interesting thing is, initially, it sounds like the judge ordered that there would be a lawyer for cross-examination purposes. That has a whole host of uh, things you need to talk about, but that's pretty contained, right? The lawyer is basically just there to ask the questions and the cross-examination. You would run the rest of the case. So everything that you would need to prepare yourself to conduct my defense, I think, is so sitting there. an issue that you're going to want to consider. At, at some, I think some length. You don't have to make a decision instantly. Which is that lawyers aren't puppets. You may think that there's some legal issues you want to raise, and that's fine. You can do that. But I'm not necessarily, as your lawyer, going to raise legal issues that I don't think have a lot of merit. Fine. No, I, I yield to your expertise. What I would want to do that, yeah. is take a look at the case and see what was likely to win. And, I, and I'll say this, and we can go into more depth, this, this is not a strong crown case. There's some facts here that are missing to prove the case. And a way of approaching that in a cross-examination is to try and demonstrate that the witnesses don't have certain elements of the offense. They're not scared, or they didn't feel harassed, uh, you were not communicating, no one told you, or you had no reason to believe that, that these people felt this way. Or a precedent has already been established that, yeah, what I do is rude, but it poses no direct or indirect threat. Could, could be, right? Causing disturbance means you have to be in a public place, and you have to cause members of the public, people, to deviate from their ordinary pattern or routine of what they would do. And that could be something as, the, as minimal as you're standing on the street yelling, and people would ordinarily stay on the sidewalk, walk down the sidewalk. Because you're on the sidewalk, they have to walk into the traffic and walk around you because you're yelling. That could be causing disturbance. Now, causing disturbance is a pretty minimal charge. Most people don't take it very seriously. Usually it can get resolved without a conviction. But that's basically the nature of the offense. The other two accounts that I see here are that you are alleged between June 5th and August 5th. Um, oh no, June 5th and August 5th you're alleged to have criminally harassed Matthew Revo, and, and then on August 5th alone you're alleged to have harassed Catherine Kelly. And criminal harassment is in the criminal code it's a more serious offense than causing a disturbance. It typically, but not always, but it typically involves somebody communicating multiple times with somebody in a way that causes that other person fear, where they feel harassed, and that fear or harassment is known to you. You know that they feel that way. What you actually say or do is important to determine whether or not they're fearful or not on one level, but ultimately it doesn't determine whether or not they're fearful. You could walk up to somebody um, multiple times and say, I like eating Frosted Flakes. And of course that sentence alone is kind of silly and it doesn't mean much to anyone uh, in most situations. But if the manner in which you make that claim in the location, the way that that person is uh, uh, situated, and whether or not that sentence about Frosted Flakes has some particular meaning to that person or to these two people, that could amount to criminal harassment even though the statement itself is really innocuous. Right? Mm -hmm. 
So we can certainly look at what statements are made, but they're not determinative of whether or not there's harassment or fear. What is that person doing to whom I go up and say, I like Frosted Flakes at the time? Are they just minding their own business, drinking coffee, buying Absolutely groceries? Absolutely an issue. Absolutely an issue that needs to be determined. Because these people are doing the complete opposite so of minding their business, own business. Right? Yep. And they have the rights, you know, like, that's what I'm saying about religious privilege, freedom of speech, and so forth. And I've been around the block when it comes to the reasonableness of their fear, and it's... The court was not compelled. Um, that previous... And I was doing stuff way more obnoxious. That previous more thing, the obnoxious. previous peace loan application, was that with the same people? Same organization, same circumstances. But different individuals. Different individuals. This is what the police say. I think this is Catherine Kelly. She mm -hmm. provided something called a victim impact statement. So it's a little premature because you haven't been convicted of anything, but it's a way of communicating how they feel. She says that she has some fear of being followed by Stuart. She feels intimidated and bullied, fear he will follow my other friends and bully them. Verbally abusive, using his size to scare me and my friends. I fear he is unstable and predictable that he may hurt me physically. Which is exactly what um, Trevor and Onwood were saying four years ago. Often right. when he sees us or while we're walking away, he'll yell, woo, yeah. <laughs> when we leave, he will follow us. Make an attempt to get to our secondary location before we do. Not an exhaustive list. Does all these things without any interaction from us, and you want to talk to him. Uh, be so, in reading this, I don't. They're lying. I, I mean, don't uh, feel. Uh, uh, well, I, they say without any interaction from us. I think we can certainly cross examine them as to like, how reliable this, these observations mm -hmm. are. How, how much Mr. Revo actually saw this, or how much someone told him about these things. Again, if someone told them about it, it's hearsay. I've done this for a long time, mm -hmm. and the reality is the police it's are not a race to the phone. much... That's right. And the police are not much interested in getting to the truth of the matter. They're interested in evaluating what somebody told them, gathering some evidence... Separating the parties. Off the play. They don't off the play. Yeah, that's it. You understand that you're right to get a lawyer, and you know, the lawyer will do for you. You know, the prosecutor's not your friend, right? No, I understand, yeah. You understand all that stuff, okay. And I can anticipate what the questions are going to be, what the answers are going to be, because exactly mm -hmm. what the questions need to be to secure the peace bond are going to be what they need to be secure the criminal harassment charge. It's just that there's even I, less for Crown to work with way, this time. Um, generally speaking, I accept that individually his actions aren't uh, a problem. They're not criminal. I wasn't scared of him showing up one time and mocking me. I was offended, but I know that, that I wasn't scared from that. What I got scared of was he was following us around. And then you be able to testify and say, no, I was not following around. I live in that neighborhood. I frequent those locations. These people are frequently there, and they engage people going by with some, some religious stuff that I think is wrong. And so on occasion, I will say things to people and film them because I think what they're saying is wrong and incorrect. And I believe I have a right to, to do that. Um, I've never threatened anybody. I never followed them around. We just happen to be in the same locations. And I appreciate that they're entitled to be here. Uh, it's a public area. Anybody can go anywhere they want. I appreciate they're entitled to spread their doctrines to people if they choose. But I think I'm also entitled to counter what they say, which is, you know, here I, I film it because I think the people should know what this religious stuff's about. And, and I think I have a right to express my opinion about it. No, you don't. They're scared. Stop it. I look at this case and I see that it is uh, mostly a question of you deciding if you want to have a fight or you want to go away. I didn't pick this fight. They totally picked this fight. They totally fight dirty. They totally lost this fight four years what ago you, and they're pretending but, that but, none of it but, happened. But going forward, let's say these charges evaporated today. Going forward, would you speak to these people again? Or would you I don't speak to them. I can't be bothered to speak to them. Their heads are full of lies. And that's cool. It's a free country. Good. I don't know that these people are actually fearful. I think that they are not fearful. Most people are causing disturbance is a guy who is high on drugs, and he's in the street, and he's yelling and screaming, and the cars can't drive through. Right. And this goes on for a long time, and they try a lot of things to get him out of there. It's, it's somebody who has uh, got a knife in their hand mm -hmm. and is uh, swinging the knife around in the air, and there's nobody nearby. He can't touch anybody. He's not I'm 100 anybody. miles away from that. With that the is, that that's causing a disturbance. Causing a disturbance might be going into a pub, screaming and yelling, flipping over tables, um, causing the people in the bar to leave because they don't want to be in the bar when someone's flipping over tables, but they're not actually touching anybody or trying to throw anybody at, throwing at anybody. Those are so how does that charge get recommended? How does Crown decide that the approval standards have been substantiated when there's proof showing that I was just being a jerk? Well, I guess they're going to try and, and not, argue that you, 
by you being a jerk, the way in which you were being a jerk. I was defending myself with seven, eight cops, three members of the Jehovah's Witness Church who don't call it lying, they call it theocratic warfare, and somebody who was threatening me with a trespass charge because Rebo asked me to leave and I didn't leave and she didn't understand the law. The Crown wants this to go away. I want this to go away, and I want but them to appreciate that ball. if they're going to invite the attention, they shouldn't be whining about the attention when they get it. Yeah. They are the only religious organization engaging in this form of evangelism. And it's a free country, that's fine. But if you beg for the attention and you get to the attention, the person giving it to you should be in jail. There is such a thing as a common law peace bond, which has existed for hundreds of years and has been in favor in some places for some periods of time, including here and not so in favor in other places. The main difference between a common law and a criminal law peace bond being? I would tell you, practically speaking, a common law peace bond can be for as long as the judge wants it to be. And a, uh, a criminal code peace bond is for a maximum of 12 months. There is an issue in regard, it's believed that there's an issue in regards to the enforceability of a common law peace bond. I don't think it's a really a real issue. I think if a judge puts you on a common law peace bond. For, say... You, for any period of time, and say there's an order not to talk to somebody, and you go talk to them, you'll get breached for breaching a court order, and that's a criminal offense. Mm -hmm. And I think that a judge would uphold that. What the questions point? are McCormick going to ask that Fox didn't ask four years ago? Uh, what did he say? Question. What did he do? Yeah. The answers are going to be the same. That's right. Well, it wasn't what he said, it was how he said it. It wasn't what he did, it was how he did it. The experience in court has been that judges, despite what you might think, are not very good about making a decision. They're not very good about picking a side. They frequently bend over backwards to make everybody look a little bit bad and a little bit good, and everybody can go away a little happy and a little sad. I think your danger here is if you have a trial is yeah. these people will say, listen, I'm just scared of the guy. I don't know what he's going to do next. Well, that's their problem. They invite the attention. Maybe I've maybe. given them the, the restrained but, 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 but attention. And dude, you. they're punching me. You're right, but it is They're not. grabbing me. They're grabbing and kicking my camera. They're pretending to be on the phone with the police. A peace bond would not be a criminal conviction. It would be a court order. It would have minimal conditions. You stay away from these people, basically. And um, the criminal charges would be stayed when you entered into the peace bond, if you entered into the peace bond. And that would bring the matter to a conclusion. There would be no risk that you were convicted of an offense, provided you... Uh, obeyed the terms of that peace But that is not would be wanted. tantamount to my acknowledging the reasonableness of their fear. You, however, want to agree that, or your, your view is that these people are not fearful, and I, and I think there's support for that in the evidence. So I think you want to have a trial. I do. All right. And now, I, as far as legal counsel goes, you and I, I think, are, seem to be on the same page. You're not a raving lunatic. I'm happy to act for you. Um, the police probably didn't need to arrest you. They probably could have could have done less than that, but I don't know that that's going to get you anything here. It doesn't seem like you gave any kind of a statement. No, I remain silent, yeah. yeah. So usually the arrest leads to a statement. The statement is incriminating, and we want to challenge the arrest and the statement because we don't want that incriminating evidence to come in. But if you well, I've got video evidence of the entire thing. The entire Did the thing. Did the police seize any of that? They didn't even look at any of it. Not interested, right? Yeah. Did the police don't like these kinds of things. They think they're beneath them. They're not interested in it. You're the bad guy, they're the good guy, the lawyers are going to deal with it, leave me alone. That's how the police have to function. What we do here is, I'll talk to the Crown, I'll say there's no dice on a peace bond, I'll act for you as counsel, and uh, we'll set this matter down for trial, mm -hmm. and it'll be a couple day trial. Mm -hmm. and it's set, 16th to the 18th of August. Oh, is it? Yep. Yeah. Ah, I didn't know that. Oh, dude, yeah. I'm not sure I'm available on those days. No. You're only finding out now that trial has been set in this case for the 16th of Yeah, this, usually this is... a legal aid referral comes in early on in the process before somebody has set down a trial. So I wonder if what we should do today is just put this off for a couple days. Have can we, can we set the pretrial conference for today? Is, does that need to be set? I don't see why we need a pretrial conference. Oh, because it's an FXD today, and I thought that was to... Fixed date is... Uh, FXD means to fix a date, and it's just for... to fix a date. I don't know why. They, but sometimes they just put that down because they have to put something down. There is going to be no pretrial conference, as far as you, your understanding in this case? I haven't been told about one, but maybe somebody's asked for one. Well, there might be a pretrial this conference. This is the because, hiccup. Because you're unrepresented, but now that you're represented, and if I don't think I need a pretrial conference... One was already scheduled, but we haven't been able to get there because I've contested the, uh, the prohibition okay. of conducting... so you have a bunch of... Maybe what it is, you but, have a bunch of legal issues? That not anymore. Issues not anymore. No, you're the man. Let's put a fine point on this. Uh, All right. Do you want to do the trial on the 16th, or yes. do you want to put it off? No, I want to go to trial. Then I think we can skip the pretrial conference, because often I'll have a pretrial conference because you don't have a lawyer, and because a judge needs to sort out a bunch of issues for that. I thought they were standard. Crown presents the elements of the offense, defense presents the elements of their defense, and then they proceed, or no, it's not necessary? I wouldn't, I wouldn't. 
In some cases, I might talk about my defense, but I usually wouldn't talk about my defense. I think this is really weak, and I think that the, the, the best they're going to get is he's f following us around. But I don't even know what that means. Like, we need to get them. We need to get them under cross so that I can get some facts. And once we have these facts, you know, it probably evaporates a little bit. He showed up one day. He's been there before. He yeah. was doing the same shit he always does, which is mocking us. Um, but a, he never threatened us. He never tried to hit us. He uh, he he didn't. He didn't intimidate us. He wasn't standing close to us. He's just saying that our religious stuff is bullshit. We take offense, and I'll point out that you don't have a right to say those things.